They say I'm dead, but I'm not. Don't say that, we need the business. What are you doing? It's okay, you've got funeral insurance. But I'm not dead. Don't say that, we need the work. Move over, I want to size you up. No, no you may not. Quick and speedy funerals, we arrive before you depart. We pay your funeral expenses before you die. What other insurer could do that? <laughs> this is a once in a lifetime offer. I decided to go busking as Bilbo. I'd bought a new pair of clownish pants from Carnaby Street and I wanted to try them out. They were brown with yellow stars and looked perfect for Bilbo to wear. The only problem was the zipper was broken, but I got around this by putting on the pants and sewing up the fly with a needle and thread. It was a precarious setup, but I reasoned that nothing could go wrong to make the thread unravel. I packed my Bilbo suitcase and with my props made my way to Hampstead Heath. Before I arrived at the Heath, a police van drove by. The cops glared at me suspiciously. Once at the Heath, I played a few tricks on the kids and their parents. I wandered down a paved pathway and lo and behold, the same police van drove past me and stopped a few yards away from me. One of the cops poked his head out the window and growled, Come here, you. It seemed like a petty power play to me that they didn't stop next to me and I had to go to them. So dressed in my Bilbo costume, I approached the cops. A burly sergeant and a constable sat in the front with two constables in the back. I decided that I wouldn't speak to the cops. Bilbo was mute and it was a matter of honour to me to remain silent. Who are you? The sergeant demanded. I mimed. I am me by pointing at myself and smiling brightly. Just a moment. Mmm, that's good tea. What are you doing? We're trying, We're trying to get, get on, on the, the same, same page. page. And mouse are forever in the house. Left us outside in the cold. Need someone to cuddle and hold. And mouse are special. And we can only pray. When it's done, it's done. There's not much more I can say. It was a spontaneous comment that I'd been thinking about for a week. I have a leading part in the movies. I'm the head usher. I was speaking to a hundred people the other day, and when I said, and in conclusion, everybody woke up. My flight starts in Sydney. I had lunch in Tehran, dinner in London, and my baggage ended up in Buenos Aires. Mm. Finally breaking free on a wild shopping spree. Falling in love with a skirt. Just have to have it. Returning to the hospital, wearing it with pride. A new woman, taking it off. Suddenly noticing a fault, feeling at fault. Panicking, what to do? Fix it or return it. Kicking up a fuss. Going back to the shop, finally marching back to the shop. Aiming shots at the sh shopkeeper over crappy goods. 
Shopkeeper, okay. Exchange, okay. Me, okay. Have a too much fuss and hassle. Feeling everything is against me. Nurse is holding on to her purse to avoid similar fashion disasters. Leaving me with no other option than to shut up shop in my mind. Brain finally closing right down. So, can you tell me who the person is with schizophrenia? Uh, I don't have a clue. No idea? Uh, no, who is it? I don't know. That's why I brought you here. Aren't you an expert? I still don't know who it is. What's in the suitcase? I handed the case to the sergeant and he rifled through its contents. He unscrewed the lid on the bubble blowing liquid and sniffed it. He squeezed the juggling balls to see if they harboured any contraband. Then he picked up the cat food tin, which let out a plaintive bah, bah. It startled the sergeant so much he threw it into the air and it dropped in his lap. The constables laughed uproariously. The sergeant glared at them and they stopped laughing. What's your name? The sergeant demanded. I pointed to the name on the suitcase. Bilbo the Clown, huh? Why don't you talk? Are you deaf and dumb? I shook my head no. Have you got any ID? I reached in my pocket and produced my membership card of the St Martin's Youth Club. I handed it to the sergeant. Bill Marshall? Yes, I nodded. Say your name. No. Are you taking the piss? No. Then say your name, otherwise we'll throw you in the back and take you down the station. I considered this ultimatum and decided it was time to speak up. What would you charge me with, I said. Dressing up as a clown and walking on Hampstead Heath. It'd be laughed out of court. Don't worry, he said ominously. We'd find something that'd stick. Just one moment. Mm. Mm. Did you know that moths that are on trees that are white change to black when the trees get misted on with fog? Misted on, okay. With, yeah, yeah, with, yeah, with pollution yeah. fog, okay. with pollution fog, they change colours. Yeah, that's very interesting, I didn't know that. Well, the rust is only there because we've got oxygen. Mm. Mm. This might seem scientific, but you know, that's mm. where it's at. Mm. 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 Bye. See ya. Thank God he's gone. What a total bore. Yeah, I thought so too. Possible. Quite intolerable. <sighs> Thank goodness he's gone. Oh yeah, we're all just saying how boring he was. Boring? He'd liven up a party just by leaving. Oh, sorry, I'm late. I couldn't find a car park. Am I late? Yes, by about 10 minutes. I'm so sorry. Sorry, I'm late. I had to make an urgent phone call. Oh, we're all off to a great start with our time management course, aren't we? Now, on with the story. Well, actually, no, there's a couple of films, and then we come back to the story. 
I was getting ahead of myself. Please all relax. Today is the first day we'll be exploring what our background has meant to us. In particular, what our parents' influence had on us. Now I'll start the ball rolling. My father was an alcoholic and my mother always suffered at his hands, which always upset me. Now Miriam, do you have any problems arising due to your childhood upbringing? Yes, my parents wouldn't let me have a dog. They sent me to Catholic school. They didn't listen to me when I said I wanted to go to university. They just said, oh, girls don't go to university. And they made me do a shorthand course and become a secretary. That must have been hard. Yes. Now, Madeline, how did your parents affect you? Oh, it was awful. My parents separated when I was young. I spent 50% of my time with my father and 50% of my time with my mother. This was really confusing for a six-year-old. And every time they'd come, they'd get their dates wrong and I would wait for them to arrive. Since then, I've always had a problem with people being late. Thanks for sharing. Did your parents affect your upbringing, Chlamydia? Excuse me. Yes, ma'am, what is your complaint? Um, I don't like the colour of the building. That's not a complaint, it's an opinion. Move aside. Excuse me, but these corridors are far, far too long and far, far too wide. It's a big hospital. I've just come down from level four and after going to the toilet, these came out. Great! The surgeon was looking for those. A good week. Last week someone came in who had lost their legs, assuring us they had their legs prior to their operation. Eric thought he was going insane. So he told his best friend Wayne, who told Sally, his girl, that Eric was in a whirl. Fool that she was, she told Jessica, because who else could you trust? But she was in lust with an Elvis lookalike named Ike, who knew it wasn't true, but just in case, he told Chase, his motorbike mechanic mate, who in turn told Kate, his sister, who knew a Mr. Drew, but Sue the Snitch told Mitch the school dunce. Now, once upon a time, long before rhyme was ever used, people got confused over rhythm and metre until a guy named Peter came along and turned it all into song and restored the poem back to its rightful glory. Now, back to the story. So there was Eric walking the street when who should he meet but Dr Brown in his surgical gown, who straight away, as clear as day, saw Eric's insanity and sent him to the infirmary, where the doc operated to remove the pain that drove Eric insane. Alas, how sad, instead of the tumour, the doc removed Eric's sense of humour. Works with the Clown Act. I like to perform. Do you perform for children? Sometimes. Who do you like more? The sergeant said in an oily voice little girls or little boys. I like them equally well, but I perform for everyone. Huh, <laughs> you're supposed to make people laugh. Well, I made the guys in the back seat laugh. By this time, the fly of my starry clown trousers, which I'd sewn together so haphazardly, had begun to stretch. I feared that the thread was going to snap and my pants would fall down around my ankles. Not a good look under the circumstances. They charged me with indecent exposure. I no doubt about that. We know your type, the sergeant sneered. You're an eccentric. The Heath can be a dangerous place for eccentrics like you. So piss off back home and don't let us see you here again. Humiliated, I slunk back to the squat. The end.
Thank you all for coming to this press conference on police community relations, inclusion and empowerment. Now over to you, Chief Commissioner. We announced today our achievements in the changing culture of the force. We have introduced the diversity strategy, including the LGBTQI community, the best equal opportunity strategy of any police force in the world, including 50% of women by the year 2025. All police stations to provide disability access, 50% from non-English speaking background to make up the force, and a youth community relations team. Any questions? But how much crime is there? The crime rate has gone through the roof. Oh,